Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are around the world. This is round four of the American F1 Racing Series. I'm Tom Kent in the commentary box, giving you coverage for today's events. Here we are at the Red Bull Ring in Austria, home of the Austrian Grand Prix, of course, and host of the Styrian Grand Prix in 2020. Drivers will be on their way out onto the circuit for the 18-minute qualifying session to determine the grid for the fourth race of this championship. It's a short qualifying session, so it's a straight 18-minute session where drivers will set their fastest times that will make up the positions on the grid. It looks as though by the uh, number of drivers for this weekend is 18 drivers for this particular occasion. And there is one change of driver lineup for this particular event from last time out, or a couple I should say. Um, Acid Masters in the racing point in place of Quasinada, uh, uh, who was in the last uh, meeting in Canada, and Monkey Mafia 99 is in the Alfa Romeo. So just waiting for the drivers to make their way out onto the circuit. The time has started to tick, uh, started to tick down. So we'll start to see some drivers make their way out onto the circuit. As you can see, there's the Williams of what looks like Bishop's Finger 1 or Ben McEwen. Either of the two. You can see that there's Ray E46 in the Red Bull coming out onto the circuit to begin his first run in this session. So you can see they're going through to turn four, Ray E46. Who else is out on circuit? Acid Masters is out on circuit, Stoke Blokers, Desimpe. I think Ray E46 is going to be the first driver to start a flying lap, so we're just going to stay with him for the time being. Coming around the penultimate corner now, the number 12 Red Bull to begin his first lap. DRS open. Up to 8th gear. This is normally a 3rd gear corner here through turn 1. Ray E4 to 6 decided to go through 4th gear there. As you can see there's the Williams coming out of the pit surfing. That might be uh, Bishop's Finger 1 who gets out of the way. And Ray E4 to 6 will continue on his way there. He misses the apex there of turn 3. But he'll get good acceleration out of the corner. So that's some recompense for missing the apex. Coming through turn 4 now. Or yeah, turn 4 it is. And then the far sweeping right handers of turns six and seven as he's about to enter, or seven and eight as he, he's coming through now. Good entry there, doesn't go too far wide. Now, this is a section of the circuit where track limits could very much come into play both in qualifying and the race. Ray E46 keeps the car within the track limits in both parts of the racetrack. And he's going to set the first time here. What's his time going to be? It's so 1 minute 5 point dead. So that's him onto the top of the time, uh, timing pages. Acid Masters goes even quicker by 18 thousandths of a second on a 1 minute 4.9. White Stripes is next in third on a 1 minute 5.6. You can see there Tilwick 14 also on a flying lap. Coming around the last couple of corners now. Into fourth gear through the last turn. He's got the Renault behind him as well. And Demot 166 has gone fastest. Tilwick 14 goes sixth fastest on a 1 minute 7.6. But I'm very sure he's lost time somewhere. But a great lap so far from Denmark to go fastest of all so far. There is Ben McEwen, pole sitter and race winner from last time out in Canada. On his 
first run. He's done a lap time already, but it's a very underrepresentative one. And he comes out of seven and eight. Goes through the last couple of corners now. Keeps the car within the chuck limits. Uses as much curb as possible. Just keeps it within the chuck limits there. And Ben McEwen goes fastest on a one minute 3.3. .3. So that's more like it there from the Scott. So that's him. P1. And Ray 46 in fourth place. Now Desimpi goes fifth fastest on a one minute 5.0. In the Alpha Tauri. Stoke Blake sixth fastest as White Stripes moves down to seventh. Monkey Mafia, who was eighth, has dropped down to ninth place, but he set his time on the medium compound. You can see there Tulwick 14 in the pits. Who else is out on circuit at the moment? Who's going to be on the flying lap now? De Simpi is going for another go. He's going for another run, I should say. Sixth fastest on a 1 minute 5.0. Can he break into the top five on this lap? We'll stay on board with him. Here we go. Look, here's a nice camera angle for you. So three, seven and eight. Doesn't go too far wide. I think he may have exceeded the track limits, you know. But you can tell because the track map has gone red. So that's his lap invalidated. Radicon comes out of there. I'm not sure if he's on a um, flying lap, actually, he's Radicon. No, he's going to be coming into the pits. He is on an in-lap there. So Denmark 166 crosses the line to go third fastest on a 1 minute 3.9. So he's less than 7 tenths off the fastest time so far. He's Denmark. So Fish's finger crosses the line to go 11th quickest and a 1 minute 6 dead. 2.7 seconds off the pace in the Williams to his teammate Ben McEwen. He's Shifted Diddy 15. One of four drivers to have yet to set a time in the session out there on the soft compound. He takes a tighter line through uh, turn 7 there. into 8th gear and this is normally a 6th gear corner is the penultimate corner of turn 9 and then you drop down to 4th gear through the last corner of turn 10 the entry speed wasn't particularly great there from Shepard Gift through 15 but he goes 10 fast on a 1 minute 5.6 let's see who else is out on circuit there's not too many cars out on the racetrack at the moment less than half the field is out on circuit Is Gummers Indu, who has just exceeded the chuck limits there on the exit of turn eight, and that's his lap wiped out. There's Noisy Boy, podium finisher last time out, third position in Canada. What can he conjure up here at the Rebel Ring? He's currently fourth in the drivers' standings on 27 points. He's tied with Ben McEwen. But with a race win to McEwen's name, he occupies third position in the standings. So if Noise Boy can put in a good qualifying performance, he could be in the frame for the race win. Straight after the session. Ten minutes to go in qualifying. Ben McEwen fastest on the 1 minute 3, nearly half a second quicker than Gamer James in second. Noise Boy crosses the line to post his first lap time and he goes fourth quickest on the 1 minute 4.2. So nine cents off the fastest time there is Noisy Boy, so he's got quite a lot of time to find in the remaining nine and a half minutes. As you can see there, Acid Masters, who is going to be coming back into the pit lane. There's De Simpi, who has gone quicker than before in the first sector, but he's completely lost it out of there, and that's his front wing wiped out, and that's his lap ruined. Here's Radicom, who is on a fast lap at the moment in the Mercedes. Radicom already a race winner in Bahrain, the opening race of the season. 
currently second in the driver's standings, 14 points behind the championship leader, that is Gaming James 06, who's currently second on the timing pages. Doesn't go too far wide, keeps the car in the chat mix. And who's that in front of him there? I think that must be the Alfa Romeo of Noisy Boy who's just coming back into the pits. So through the final corner into fifth gear, goes to the inside of the straight, and he goes second fastest on a 1 minute 3.5. So he's closer now to McEwen, is uh, Radicon. So he's a quarter of a second shy of the Williams driver's lap time. Here's Stoke Bloke in the Ferrari. He's nearly two tenths quicker than his personal best in set to one. Ninth position at the moment is uh, Stoke Bloke. He set his first time on the medium compound. He's on the soft compound this time, so we expect to see a much faster lap time than before. As you can see there, nearly seven tenths quicker than before is Stoke Bloke. He's got the McLaren in front of him, who should get out of the way. But at the moment, he hasn't quite done so. But Stoke Bloke may get the benefit of the slipstream on the start from his straight. So here we go, look. DRS open, Stoke Bloke goes over the line and he goes seventh fastest on a 1 minute 4.4. So it's the fastest lap time than before, but he may have lost time behind the Mercedes there, has, uh, has Stoke Bloke. You can see the Red Bull coming out of the pits there. Uh, that might be Ray E46. No, it's not. It's Melkus 22 who has yet to set a um, lap time so far. B Natty Natta is the um, other driver yet to post the time. Gummers Indu has yet to set a representative time so far in this session. You can see plenty of drivers coming back out onto the circuit for another run. There's Kareem 2L07 in the McLaren. What can he put together on this run? I think he's actually done a lap as uh, Kareem 2L. You can see on his ERS there, he's got no energy left to do uh, a run here. So I can imagine he will come straight back into the pit lane. Or is he going to go on a lap? I think he's actually going to go on a lap, you know. Okay, he goes wide there and he compromises his exit there. So he's been Natty Natter on a fast lap in the Haas. Around the last few corners now, the number 22 Haas. Not too much kerb on the outside. Nice entry speed, good exit speed from the American. And he goes 15th fastest on a 1 minute 6.1. So he's 2.8 seconds off the fastest time. Now Malchus 22 is the only driver yet to set a fast time, but he's on a fine lap now. Is the number 21 Red Bull. He's stopped behind there. What well, looks like Kareem 2L07, who needs to get out of the way, really. Or is that Ray E46? It's not Ray E46, sorry. It's Gamer James. It might have been uh, Gamer James 06. By the way, the McLaren's out of the way, and so is the Renault there. On a, I think that might have been the Mercedes, actually. Either way, Malgus 22. Over the line. And he goes fifth fastest on a 1 minute 4.2. So that's 9 tenths off the fastest time. So... We have a much better picture now in terms of the qualifying times between the drivers. It is a very short lap here, is the Red Bull ring. I wonder if Malchus 22 is going to go for another flying lap here. He's already faster than before in sets of one, so we'll stay on board with him. Can he break into the top five? So Ben McEwen is fastest, Noiser Boy is second, then it's Radicon, Gamer James, Denmark. Malkis, Astrid Masters, Stoke Blake, Vicious Finger 1, and Monkey Mafia 99. Malkis 22 on course for a better lap. He actually posted the fastest first sector time of anyone. I'd like to think he's going to be in the frame of the top four here with this lap. Over the line he goes. It's a 1 minute 3.9. That's more like it there from. Malkis 22 and he goes fifth fastest ahead of Denmark 166. So we're going to be in for an intriguing 
last four minutes of this qualifying session. You can see Ben McEwen coming back into the pits. And it looks like Marcus 22 is still going for another lap. But I think he's going to run out of ERS to, uh, to put together a, um, a decent lap here. But we'll stay with him for the time being, in case I'm mistaken. Putting together a great lap so far, but I think he's going to start to lose time as his ERS, sorry, his ERS is running out. He's still over two, nearly two tenths faster than before, so we'll stay with him. Because he is on a quick lap here, he's um, Marcus 22. Through the last two turns before the start finish straight. And Marcus 22 does go fourth quickest now on a 1 minute 3 7. So that's a great lap time there from Marcus 22. And he goes fastest. He goes, sorry, he goes faster than the championship leader, Gamer James. Drivers starting to come out now for their last runs. Here's Denmark 166. Personal best so far in sector one. What can the Renault driver come up with in response to Marcus 22's lap time? He's nearly a tenth faster than before on his previous best. Can he get back into the top five with this lap? So the number 24 Renault. Down the start finish straight now. And he goes. He stays six fastest, but did improve his time. But we'll need to go again. There's Radicon. Half a tenth up on his previous best in set to one. So taking a wide line there at turn six. And then take. Don't go too far wide through seven. And then through eight. And the last two turns of nine and ten. And should he... Oh, he's, he's overcooked it there as uh, Radicon missed the apex. That's going to cost him time. I don't think he's going to go faster than before, to be honest with you. No, he's lost time with that uh, mistake at the penultimate turn. So he stays third fastest there, does Radicon. He's Ray E46, 7,000 down from his previous best. But we'll stay on board with him in case he can find time in the remainder of the lap. So Ray E46, 11th fastest on the 1 minute 5 dead. I'm sure he would like to improve. And he's 3 tenths up in the second sector, so he's on course for a better lap here, is Ray E46. Less than a minute to go now. And the checker flag will soon be falling, and Ray E46 makes a similar mistake there to what Radicon did a moment ago. So it's going to cost him time there, but it may be a better lap than before, and it is. He goes 10th fastest on a 1 minute 4.5. So that's him up there. Vicious Finger has set a better first sector, but he has exceeded the trap limit. So that's his lap. Um, wipes out. Monkey Mafia. You can see that. Thomas Indu. 16 fastest in the Mercedes on the mediums and Ben McEwen goes fastest on a 1 minute 2.9 that's six ten, nearly 6 tenths quicker than Noisy Boy in second so great lap there from McEwen so Noisy Boy aiming to respond to that the checker flag has fallen so any driver on the fast lap can complete it Noisy Boy loses the back end slightly, that's going to compromise his exit. He's posted the fastest second sector time of anyone in this, sec in this um, session. So Noisy Boy on course for a better lap, but I don't think he's going to trouble uh, Ben McEwen. And he's one right there, he's got distracted I think by the Williams, so that's Noisy Boy's lap time over. There's Gamer Jones um, 06, who has completed his final time, and he's five thousands of a second slower than Noisy Boy. So Ben McEwen will start the Austrian Grand Prix from pole position ahead of Noisy Boy and Gamer James 06. So any other drivers on the fast hut? Acid Masters posts a better time than before and he stays 7th quickest. 
So that's the session over. So Ben McEwen on pole ahead of Noisy Boy. Gaming James is third on the grid. Radicon fourth. Marcus 22 fifth. Denmark 1 to 6 is sixth. Acid Masters in seventh. It's Mucky Mafia in eighth. So Blake Knight. Shifty 50, 15 in 10th place. Then it's Ray 46 in 11th. Vicious Finger 1 in 12th. Gummers Indu in 13th. The Simpy in 14th. White Strikes 15th. Tilwick 14 in 16th. And it's Been Natty Nasa and Kareem 2L07 making up the grid. So a grid session there from the drivers. Very, very fast times. And we look forward to a fascinating Grand Prix in a few minutes time. So there's your grid, Ben McEwen on pole, Noisy Boy in second alongside him on the, um, on the front row. Then it's Gamer James 06 and Radicon on row 2. Then it's Malchus 22 and Denmark in, on row 3. Acid Masters and Monkey Mafia on row 4. Stoke Bloke and Shiffy Gifty 15 on row 5. Ray E46 and Bishop's Finger on row 6. Then it's Gamers Indu and Disimpy on row 7. White Stripes and Tilwick on row 8. And B Natty Natta and Kareen Terrell 07 make up the grid. So can McEwen make it two wins in a row from pole position? Can Noisy Boy put himself within the frame of a race win? We've had three different race winners from the three races so far in the American F1 Racing Series. Could we get a fourth here today? So we're just waiting for the drivers to complete their race strategies and the formation that will get underway here in Austria. It's a bright sunshine on the Red Bull ring in the Styria Mountains. So I'm less than 30 seconds away from the formation lap now. In terms of pit strategy, it could go either way, really, in terms of how pit strategy works, depending on how you filter back out in traffic when once you make your uh, pit stop. The one-stop strategy seems to be the fastest way to go about it, considering it is a short lap here in Austria. But the undercut does work very, very well here at this particular racetrack. And now the drivers have completed their strategies for the event. And they go off on their formation lap. So Ben McEwen leads the way. Noisy Boy, can he put himself in the frame for victory in the Alfa Romeo? Then it's Gamer James looking to maintain his consistent start to the season. You can see the pit stop strategy. One stop window opens on lap 12 and the two stoppers on lap 10. So looking forward to see how strategy plays out, uh, plays out in this one. So all the drivers are starting on the soft compound. So not long to go now before the start of the Austrian Grand Prix, Ben McEwen. Take to the grid on pole for the second event running. So Ben McEwen leads the pack onto the grid. Can Noisy Boy threaten from second place there? You can see. Pit stop strategy, lap 14 for those looking to go on the mediums. And lap 12 for those going on the hards. That's when the window opens there. Although time penalties could play a huge role in this race and possibly a safety car as well. So the last car on the grid is in place. 
when the five lights go out, we'll be racing here at the Red Bull Ring. Lights out and away we go and Ben McEwen gets off to a great start. Noisy by slots in behind and also a great start from Gamer James 06. Around the outside and into second place goes Denmark 166 in the Renault. But I think he's had contact there with the Alfa Romeo on the exit. So that's Denmark 166 potentially with damage already. Malgus 22 has made the jump up into second place in the Red Bull. So great start from him. But Ben McEwen keeps hold of the lead. And it's Malgus 22 in the Red Bull. It's Noisy Boy, Denmark, Gamer James 06, Radicon in the Mercedes there. And it's Acid Masters in seventh place. And a South Lake, Mackie Mafia and Ray E46 as Acid Masters gets past the Mercedes of Radicon into sixth place. So great start from him. And he also has a sneak peek at the McLaren at Gamer James 06. But he keeps hold of uh, six places down the inside there of the McLaren. And Acid Masters maintains his sixth position behind Gamer James 06. So as they come round to complete the first lap, it's Ben McEwen who leads ahead of Malgus 22, Denmark 166. It's Noisy Boy, Gamer James 06, Acid Masters, and Radicon in seventh place. So looks as though all the drivers have got through cleanly on the opening lap. I'd be interested to see if there's any drivers who have picked up any damage. And it looks as though the drivers have come away unscathed out of all that. We'll let you know if there is any damage to any of the drivers. But it looks as though they all have come away relatively clean there. There's no damage on uh, Marcus 22's um, car. Or on uh, uh, in Denmark 166. He went, he darted into the first turn on the inside there in the um, in the Renault. But it looks like he's come away unscathed. And um, the Alfa Romeo there of Noisy Boy in fourth place. He didn't get off the line as well as he wanted to have done. But there's a long way to go yet in this one. You can see there the predicted bit strategy updating all the time. But the drivers will make their own mind up as the race goes on as to when to pit to make the switch onto the mediums. They do have to take their mandatory pit stop at least once. You can see Gamer James 06, the first driver to pick up a time penalty for multiple warnings. Presumably for exceeding the trap limits there. So that's the first of predictably... Uh, a number of penalties being given to the drivers. Game of James 06 is the first one, so he's got his work cut out already. So Ben McEwen setting the fastest up of the race so far. Marcus 22 goes even faster on a 1 minute 6.6. .6. So Marcus 22 already eating into uh, Ben McEwen's lead. And there's Radicon down the inside there of Acid Masters into turn one. But Acid Masters has the momentum to keep hold of sixth place there. But Radicon is going to be back for more though through turn two and then into the Remus curve of turn three and Radicon's going to be down the inside there of the racing point and I think Radicon has got that one so Radicon up into sixth position there in the Mercedes you can see there Stoke Bloke fancying his chances but I think Aston Master is going to get back on the inside there of Radicon and they both make contact but I think Aston Master is going to have the traction out of uh, turn four and that is the racing point back into sixth position and Noisy Boy has got back ahead of Denmark 166. So Noisy Boy back up into third place. The next one up front in front of him is Noisy Boy 37. There's a yellow flag there. Something has happened, I think, is at the back, but that seems to have cleared very, very quickly. So Ben McEwen has a three second lead over Malchus in second place. It's Noisy Boy in third place. Denmark in fourth. Gamer James in fifth. Aston Masters sixth. Radicon seventh. Then it's Stoke Blake. Ma Monkey Mafia. And Ray E46 rounding out the top 10. And riding on board here with what looks like Monkey Mafia around the outside of Stoblo, as is Radicon on Acid Masters with DRS. So positions constantly changing as the race goes on. Monkey Mafia didn't get good traction out of turn 3, and that's Stoblo back into 8. Let's have a look further down the order. You can see the drivers are beginning to space out as the race goes on. Some Ben McEwen lead him. So looking at the um, the time so far. So Marcus 22, the fastest so far. But I think Ben McEwen might set a faster time than uh, Marcus 22. And Acid Masters now has a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. I'll go through his time at the end of the race and there's someone off. And that is Schiffer Gifty 15. He's made a mistake at turn eight. Gets back onto the racetrack. 
He's at the back of the field and he's got damage to his front wing there. So he'll need to pit for a, a replacement. I think Ben McEwen running wide there. But he's got a comfortable lead over Marcus 22 in second place. And there's another incident in the sense of everything. That's uh, Shifty Gifty 15 coming into the pits for a change of front wing. So Noisy Boy in third. And Gamer James 06 has got ahead of Denmark 166 into fourth place. And he's going to have DRS on uh, Noisy Boy in front. Noisy Boy not close enough to Marcus 22 to have the DRS. Coming down onto the start finish straight now. And Noisy Boy. Continuing to keep hold of third position. He runs wide there on the exit of turn one though. He won't want to be doing that too much as he will be exceeding the track limits if he does so. And ben McEwen lapping the Ferrari of uh, Shifty Gifty 15. And Shifty Gifty 15, I wonder what tyres he's on. So he's come out on a set of mediums now. I don't think he will want to uh, be pitting again before the end of this race. He's going to have to hope. Possibly for a safety car. So they get to the leader. Four seconds between McEwen and Marcus Wing. So, and Sheffield Gifty 15 has gone for another spin now in the Ferrari. And I think he's left the session actually as uh, Sheffield Gifty 15. So it looks like his race is run. He's in a dangerous position on the racetrack. Almost on the racing line. In fact, he's on the racing line now. It's just the gift of 15. And that's not very good driving, really, from, from the Israeli. He's coming back into the pits now. I don't know if that's going to be for another change of uh, tyres there. I think he's damaged his front wing there. And there's someone off there. That's uh, Ray E46 who's gone for a spin. He was running in the top 10 was uh, Ray 46 and now he's down the order and it looks like he's damaged his front wing as a result of it. So he will be coming into the pits for a change of tyres and a new nose cone. So Ben McEwen continuing to lead out in front. And Ray 46 has now retired from the session, so that's him out of the race. And uh, Jane, Gamer James going wide there on the exit of turn 9, and that's going to compromise his exit onto the start of the straight. And here's Noisy Boy, who is down the inside here with DRS. He's going to get third place, and Denmark 166 is going to pass him possibly into fourth. But Game of James 06 managed to get good traction out of turn one to keep hold of fourth position. So, and there's a move there from Stoke Lake down the inside of Aston Masters. Very robust remover there, and that's going to open the door for Monkey Mafia to sneak through into seventh. So, that's very much, thank you very much. I'll take seventh place, says Monkey Mafia. And another change of position, White Stripes getting past uh, Gummer's Indu. And I think he's made a mistake somewhere. He has. He's gone off the racetrack. He's come back onto the racetrack, in, almost into the path there of B Natty Natta. So not a good rejoin of the circuit there from Gummer's Indu. As you can see that Desimpi coming in for an early tyre change. And Game James 06 has got another um, three seconds added to his uh, penalty. So he's six seconds, he's going to be six seconds worse off than what he's on the road now. So, you can see Ben McEwen, who's just put a lap actually on there. Uh, on um, to Simpy. And Kareem ZL07, three second time penalty for multiple warnings. And Kareem ZL07 going well there in the McLaren in 13th place. Doing much better than he was last time out in Canada. And 
We're on lap 9 out of 36 at the quarter way mark of this Austrian Grand Prix. So McEwen looking very, very good at the front. Very content at the front. You can see De Simpi right behind him there, trying to gain as much time as possible. You can see there Marcus 22 under pressure now from Noiseboy, who's less than a second behind him, thus having DRS. And I wonder if this is going to be a change of position here for second place. And Acid Masters has just been given a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That's not going to do his chances of a points finish any good whatsoever. Noisy Boy down the inside of Malchus to take second place into the Remus curve. You see Acid Masters completing his tyre change. He's gone onto the medium compound. I'm expecting to go to the end of the race. And remember, he's got eight seconds worth of time penalty. That will be added to his race time. And I think um, Ben McEwen's just been on lap touch by DeSimpy, but he won't care too much about that. And Karim ZL07 has got another three seconds added for multiple warnings. So Noise Boy in second and Malchus 22 has dropped down to fifth place. He's lost another couple of positions to see Gamer James and Denmark 166. So Malchus beginning to lose some pace now. The next one behind him is Radicon in sixth place. And it's Monkey Mafia pulling away from Stoke Lake. And it's White Stripes and Tilwick 14 rounding out the top ten. So Ben McEwen continuing to set some very fast times and there's an incident in sector one and that is B Natty Natu has gone round. And one of his damaged the, uh, the car actually, he has, he's got damage to the front left end plate so he will need to come back into the pits for a new nose cone. And someone's gone for a spin in set two. Couldn't tell who it was, but the incident seems to have cleared very, very quickly. And Noisy Boy's got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. So bad news for him. He's right behind Game James 06 for second. Continuing their ding dong battle. Nice aerial view here at the Red Bull Ring. Right on the board here with Noisy Boy. Aiming to get back into second. Demo 166. Doesn't have any time penalties to his name. So as it stands, he would finish second. But we're only a third of the way through the event. McEwen extending his lead to eight seconds over Game James in second place. He continues his battle with Noisy Boy. Come down the start for the straight now. And it looks as though that Noisy Boy is going to be within range to get past the McLaren here. And Gamer James right behind him as they come up to the Remus curve, turn three. Strange, he's gone up straight up into fourth gear there as uh, Noisy Boy. And uh, I think Stoke Bloke has come into the pits actually for a change of tyres onto the hard compound. So he will most definitely be going to the end of the race. Where will he come back out? He'll be behind Acid Masters, who's on the mediums, completing the undercut on Stoke Bloke. But remember, Acid Masters has got an eight second time penalty to his name. So he's got a lot of ground to make up as Gummers Indu goes for a spin on the exit there. Acid Masters and Gummers Indu making contact at turn three. And Gummers Indu drops down the order to what is now 14th place behind Bishop's Finger. And White Stripes have 
believe has been given, or may have been just simply actually, three seconds time penalty for multiple warnings. Here we're back in, in the battle for second place here. Noisy boy round the outside of Gamer James. Now is that second place going to him? Not so, because Gamer James runs him out wide, and that's going to give Denmark 166 a chance to get ahead of it. And there's an instant there. I think someone's gone for a spin. I think that might have been Gummer's Indu that's gone round. He's in the gravel trap at turn eight. So not good news for him. I think he might have damage, you know, to his front wing. He will he won't want to get in the way of um of Ben McEwen. I think he has come into the pits now as uh, as the Mercedes driver, so that's one less worry for McEwen. He puts the lap on the Mercedes driver. Gaming James 06 has another three seconds added to his time, so that's his race further compromised. Ben McEwen running right uh, running wide there. I'd like to think he's got a warning for that. I don't know how many warnings he's had so far in the event. But here we go. Take three here between Gaming James and Noisy Boy in the battle for second. In August 22, the latest to be given a time penalty. He'll have three seconds added to his race time. And contact there between Gaming James and Noisy Boy. This is going to go right to the very end of this battle. But it's Noisy Boy who'll have the last laugh as it stands. And Monkey, Maf uh, Monkey Mafia coming in for a change of tyres onto the medium compound. He'll go to the end of the race. And he rejoins side by side with Stoke Bloke. So whilst one Alfa Romeo battles on, race on the racetrack, another is having a battle with a Ferrari of Stoke Bloke. I think Stoke Bloke is going to have the upper hand on this one because he's got much better acceleration off the exit of turn three and he's going to be in front of the Alfa Romeo. And Ben McEwen coming in for his first pit stop. Likely to be his only one as well and he goes on to the medium compound. So that's the Williams driver coming out. I think Noisy Boy's in the pits as well for his first pit stop and he will rejoin behind Denmark 166 and be nutty nutty the latest to be given a time policy as you can see Denmark 166 on much fresher tyres is going to get by the uh, the Red Bull so Denmark 166 has already made his pit stops he's completed the undercut actually on Noisy Boy and Gamer James 06. But here's Marcus 22 down the inside. A little bit of contact there between the Red Bull and the Renault. But it's Denmark who remains in front of Malkus. So even with his pit stop, Ben McEwen continues to lead by nine seconds. He got through the entire of the Canadian Grand Prix penalty three. Penalty three, I should say. And it's so he's on course to repeat the feat here in Austria. There's Radicon in fifth place. So all the drivers have now made at least one pit stop. You can see the position change there. So Denmark four places up from his starting position. Marcus two places up from his starting position. Game of James three positions down. White Stripes five places up. You can see here is Radicon in fifth place. Marcus 22 refusing to leave Denmark alone. He wants that second place, does Marcus 22. So We've got a four car, we've got a three car battle for, se uh, for second place on the road. Denmark 166. As Ben McEwen sets a new fastest lap, a 1 minute 5.8. He currently occupies the fastest lap point. Could be crucial come the end of the season. So 
So as it stands, Birmingham Kirin would win the race. Denmark 166 would finish second. And Radicon would finish third. Malchus 22 in fourth. Noisy Boy in fifth. If you're into include the time penalties. But here's Noisy Boy down the inside of Malchus 22 for third. But the Rebel keeps his foot in it. Noisy Boy's going to fight it out with him now. And that's third place for the Alfa Romeo driver. Radicon's going to fancy his chances here. As Noisy Boy and Malchus keep on fighting with each other. Through turn six. This battle's going to go right all the way to the very end. Without a shadow of a doubt. There's Ben McEwen coming up behind some back markers now. He won't, need, he won't need to take too many risks there. The McLaren ghosting as uh, coming out of turn one. So Denmark 166 in second place there. This is a great four car battle for second here. Now Denmark is not going to have DRS. Noisy Boy is. So Denmark's going to have to go defensive here. Noisy Boy down the inside. He's going to need to run him out wide, which he does. I think Denmark's going to not. He's not going to have the acceleration out of the Remus curve as he would have wanted. So Noisy Boy up into second place. And we'll need to pull out a three second margin on Denmark and Radicon if he wants to keep hold of second by the end of the event. There's Acid Masters. Last minute replacement for Quasi Nada. Running in seventh place at the moment, but remember he's got an 11 second time penalty. So as it stands, he'll drop to ninth place. So you can see that Denmark 166 now has a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. So that throws another spanner into the mix. So the only driver in this four car battle for second place on the road who does not have a time penalty is Radicom. As it stands, he would finish second. But I'm sure he'd like to try and catch Ben McEwen if he can. And to do that, he'll need to get past Denmark and Noisy Boy. And he nearly did so on Denmark, but he's going to be vulnerable to Marcus 22 behind him. I think the Mercedes is going to keep his nose in front of the Red Bull. So Noisy Boy stays in second. Denmark third. Radicon fourth. And Marcus fifth. Game James 06, the championship leader. He's in 6th position, but with his 9 second time penalty, he would keep hold of it actually, because Aston Masters has his time penalty, and he would keep the same front of uh, Monkey Mafia. So as it stands in regards to the championship, Gamer James 06 would have 8 points from this race, and Radicon would have 12 points from the event. Now how would that impact the championship? Because those two were the top two come uh, at the beginning of this race. So as it stands, the gap... Well, the gap was 14 seconds coming into the event. Game of James leading ahead of... Uh, I think we just had a, uh, a spinner, actually. I think that might have been uh, B Natty Nasa, who's gone for a spin. The instance cleared now, anyway. But back to what I was saying about the championship standings. Game of James 06 would be on... 69 points and Radicom would be on 59 points so the gap would be down from 14 to 10 points as it stands although having said that Radicom does not have any time penalties to his name unlike Noisy Boy and Denmark so Radicom would finish in second place as it stands which would get him another six points which would narrow the championship gap down to four points to game James 06 with Ben McEwen leading He'll have 26 points added to his total of 27, which would put him onto 53 points. Which would put him into the, most certainly into the championship battle after the first four races. So the championship, you can see the cars there. Noisy Boy continuing to pull away. Now he's got six seconds of time penalties now, has Noisy Boy. So he's got to pull out a three second gap on 
Denmark and six seconds on Radicom. So he's got an even tougher job now between the present moment to the end of the Grand Prix. It's in hold of second position. Radicon, so not Radicon, um, Ben McEwen on his own at the front. 14 laps to go now for the Williams driver. There's an incident there involving what looks like B Natty Natter, and he's got damage through his front right, uh, front wing end plate. Marcus 22 has got another three seconds to his time for exceeding the track limits, and Acid Masters has got another three seconds added. Tilwick 14 trying to get out of the way there of the leaders, and there's a spin there, and that's a crash for the Mercedes there. That looks like uh, Radicon. Is that Radicon? No, it's Gomez Indu um, in the Mercedes. It's gone for a spin. And the safety car has been deployed, but a nasty accident there for the Mercedes of Gummers Indu. I thought it was Radicon for a moment there, but it's Gummers Indu who has crashed on the exit of Turn 1. And that has brought out the safety car. Now, that could change the whole picture of this event. Bermi Kuhn is leading. He's got no time penalty to his name. Noisy Boy's got six seconds worth of time penalties. Denmark's got three seconds. Radicon's got no time penalty to his name. Now, the top 10 are all on the lead lap. Now, I wonder, will Ben McEwen come into the pits for a change of tyres? Will any of the drivers come in for a change of tyres? Yes, they will. But Noisy by Denmark 166, Radicon, Malchus 22, Game James 06, they're all going to be coming in for a change of uh, tyres, as is Acid Masters. Uh, Monkey Mafia is also pitting, as is Stoke Bloke. Now, if I was Ben McEwen, I would be pitting. He's got to pit this lap, surely, but he's caught up to the back of the safety car. Now, Ben McEwen's on the mediums, whereas those pitting are going to be on the they're going to be on the softs. So Ben McEwen's going to be vulnerable to those behind. On the um, on the um, on the soft compound. So yeah, Acid Masters is on the mediums actually. He might have served some of his time penalty under the safety car actually, as um, Acid Masters in the racing point. But the likes of Noisy Boy Denmark, Radicon Malchus Twenty Two, Gamer James, and Acid Masters have pitted for a set of softs and Ben McEwen's desperate to get into the pit lane to get onto a set of the uh, the soft compound and that's what he's going to do now where there's Noisy Boy who will catch up to the safety car won't be able to pass it of course there's uh, the back markers going past the safety car now so there's the Williams there going onto the soft compound now, where will Ben McEwen rejoin? Because Acid Masters is coming down on the start of this race. So, Ben McEwen will be in sixth place come the restart. This is going to make for an interesting end to the race. So, Noisy Boy in the lead on the road. He's got a time penalty to his name. Six seconds, in fact. So, Denmark 166 would be ahead of him, but he's also got three seconds. Radicon. He's already won a race this season, he's in third place. Marcus 22, he's also pitted as fourth. Game of James 06 is fifth. And Ben McEwen, who had dominated the whole race from the very beginning, has got a lot of work to do in sixth place. As the Masters is seventh, followed by Monkey Mafia, who could be on course for a podium if he keeps it up. Then it's Stoke Bloke in ninth, Bush's Finger, uh, Korean ZL07, Dissimpy, White Strikes, and Tilwick. Well, Tilwick is the first of the lapped cars behind, so he won't be able to get back on the lead lap. Now, Noisy Boy. And the safety car will go around for one last time. At the end of the next lap, we'll be back on the way again. We're going to be in for a thrilling end to this Austrian Grand Prix. 
and this could shape up the championship come the end of it. I mean, with the time penalties at the moment, Gamer James could fall down to as far as 8th place and Vatican could end up winning this one. Now, if that proved to be the case, then Radicon would take the lead of the championship. My goodness me, this could change the championship picture so much. Never mind the race. We could be in for a new race winner. Now, the drivers who have already won a race so far this season are Radicon in Bahrain, Gamer James in Italy, and Ben McEwen in Canada. Noiser Boy is yet to win a race this season. Denmark has yet to win a race this season. Malkus, who's in fourth place with six seconds worth of time penalty, he's yet to win a race so far this season. So the safety car's in this lap. So we're going to be back underway very, very shortly. So you can see there, Noisy Boy back in the field up. Raring to go. He's effectively becoming the safety car now. And when he's ready, he will pull clear. And he's, he's like leaving them for dead now. In fact, Denmark 166 has been caught napping there, as is Radicom. So they're coming over the line now on the restart. So Noisy Boy leads then ahead of Denmark 166. Radicom third, Malkus 22-4. Gamer James in fifth place. It's Ben McEwen, who had dominated the event, is in sixth place. Then it's Acid Masters, Monkey Mafia, Stoke Bloke and Vicious Finger rang out the top 10. But remember, some of these drivers have got time penalties that are going to be added at the end. So keep an eye on that. As you can see, Denmark 166 trying to make a move on Noisy Boy for the lead. Now remember, they don't have DRS for the first two laps of the restart. Denmark round the outside there, switching back to the inside and then the outside again. Goes round the outside of the Alfa Romeo driver. Can he pull off a great move round the outside, Denmark? I think he may well do because he's going to have the inside line for turn six. But Alvaro Romeo, the Alvaro Romeo driver of Noisy Boy, keeps his nose ahead of the Renault driver. Vatican's now got a three second time penalty for exceeding chart limits. So that's going to throw another spanner into the mix for the race victory. So as it stands, Ben McEwen in sixth place would win, even though he's in sixth place on the road. But he would need to get by Game of James 06 as soon as he can to get back into race winning contention there's a car off in the background at sector 2 or in the last sector it looks like one of the Alfa Romeos or the uh, Alfa Tari I should say we'll pick up on it and it's De Simpi who's gone for a spin and he's got damage to his front wing and it looks like the other uh, Alfa Tari has gone for for a trip on the grass on the uh, on the rough area that's white stripes So back at the front, Noiseboy in the lead still at the moment. Second clear of uh, Denmark in second place. Then it's Radicon third, Malkus 22 in fourth. Gamer James 06 with a nine second time penalty is in fifth place. Ben McEwen, the only driver in the top six to not have a time penalty at all to his name, is in sixth place. And as it stands, he would win. He'd most definitely win because Denmark 166 and Radicon, who have got three second time penalties each, they would fall behind Ben McEwen. As would Noisy Boy. Marcus 22 has got another three seconds added to his race time for, corner, uh, for exceeding the chat limits. And I think the leaders are going to come up to a back marker shortly because I think to Simpy. He's going to end up holding the leaders up in a minute, but he's going to be on much fresher tyres, so he may not become as much of a problem as first seems. You can see that Radicon, he's now in a firm battle here with Denmark because he's got a time penalty as long as uh, Denmark's. So eight laps to go here in the Austrian Grand Prix. It's anyone's game now for the race win. It looks like Ben McEwen had it in the bag until Gummers Indu had that wild accident. Coming into turn two, which brought out the safety car, and that shapes the order so much. 
You can see Marcus 22 under pressure from gamers, uh, so Gamer James, and DRS has been enabled. So drivers will be able to get the extra straight line speed. And there's a battle now between Marcus 22 and Gamer James 06, who goes down the inside there of the Red Bull. And Gamer James 06 runs wide and loses ground there to the Red Bull. And now he's going to be under, under pressure from the Williams of Ben McEwen, who's down the inside of the McLaren. And they both touch. But Ben McEwen's going to have the inside line into turn four. And the Williams driver is going to be up into fifth place. So Gamer James 06, the championship leader, drops down into sixth place. So Ben McEwen has got past one of the cars there to try and get back into contention for the race victory. And as it stands, he would win. He would win the Grand Prix. But he can't afford too many mistakes. So Noisy Boy, 37, crossing the line to kickstart 31. Six laps to go. And Radicon with three seconds worth of time penalty to his name is on the tail of Denmark who doesn't have DRS Radicon does he's round the outside is Radicon into turn three and round the outside that's a clean manoeuvre there from Radicon who gets past the Denmark speeds coming out of turn three and that's his race compromised massively he's gone round the, one, the wrong way and he's reset back onto the racetrack and I'm sure he's going to end up getting a time penalty for that but that's a massive, massive blow there for Denmark 166. He had a great race up until that point. And he's going to be well, well disappointed there for Denmark. But that's another place gained for Ben McEwen. So, nice boy, continuing to lead. Ben McEwen just needs to keep the car on the road. But he's got a three second time penalty now as Ben McEwen for exceeding the chat limit. So if he's going to win this race now, not only he would need to pass Malchus 22, he would also need to get past Radicon for the race win. And he's only got five laps to do it. Can he do it? Can he get past Malchus 22? Not through the Remus curve. But it's possible they could do it through turn four. So down, can he get the move down the inside there? It's very close to the Red Bull, but he's not close enough. He needs to get by the Red Bull as soon as he can and make inroads on Radicon. Now, unless Radicon gets another time penalty for exceeding the track limits, then McEwen would not get the race victory. Radicon would do. Now he needs to get past Malkus as soon as possible. Can he do it on the start-finish straight? Malkus won't have DRS. Ben McCream does. He's got it on the start-finish straight here. He's down the inside, coming into turn one. And Ben McEwen makes contact with the Red Bull. He's losing time. He's lost time, has the Williams driver. And now Gamer James has taken advantage of the mistake. And he's got back into fourth position on the road. But he won't keep that fourth place because of his time penalty. So... Ben McEwen has got a mammoth of a task now to get the race victory and Gamer James 06 has picked, an up, has picked up another three seconds of time penalty for exceeding the chat limit. So this is Radicon's race win to lose now. Noisy Boy with his time penalty, he would only drop to second place. Or would he actually because he only needs to make up three seconds on Radicon. So Noisy Boy, not only would he win on the road, as it stands, he would win completely on merit. So Noisy Boy, with three laps to go, with his time penalty in comparison to Radicon's, it's his race to lose. He would become the fourth different race winner from the fourth different team to win in the American F1 Racing Series. Three laps to go now. So all Noisy Boy needs to do is keep the car on the track. And Gamer James is side by side actually with the Red Bull of uh, Marcus 22. And I think Ben McEwen's got past the Red Bull as well. So Ben McEwen has got past the pair of them. 
So he's potentially back into contention for the race victory. So nicer boy. Just over a couple of laps to go now. So as it stands, he would take the victory. Can Ben McEwen get past Radicom? He's got DRS. Radicom doesn't. So Ben McEwen will get the advantage on the start finish straight. But for how much longer? Because I think Radicom's going to have DRS onto the back straight. I don't think he actually does, you know. But he may do on the back straight after the remus curve because of the back marker in front of him. Can Ben McEwen get past the Mercedes for second place? It's very much possible. He didn't get good drive out of the corner though. And Radicon's got DRS like Ben McEwen, so that takes the advantage away from the Williams driver. So Noiser Boy shortly will be starting his final lap. 3.9 seconds in front of Radicon. So as it stands, Noisy Boy would still take the victory. As for Gamer James, he would drop to what looks like ninth place by the looks of it, possibly eighth, but we'll find out at the end. So one lap to go now. Noisy Boy in the lead. And the Alpha Tari there of uh, what looks like Tissimpi, he needs to move out of the way of the leaders. And it looks like Ben McEwen's going to have a run on the Mercedes of uh, Radicon. Side by side through turn two. Can Ben McEwen get round the outside of the Mercedes for second? I think he's got it, you know. And Ben McEwen gets up into second place. So the Williams driver back up into second as Marcus 22 gets another three seconds added to his time penalty. So I don't think Ben McEwen's going to have enough time to make up 1.2 seconds for the race victory. But here's Noisy Boy. And there's a, an incident in sector two now, but I think that's cleared very, very quickly. But here's Noisy Boy, who has been brilliant throughout the race so far. He's got six seconds worth of time penalty added. But with Ben McEwen's three second time penalty, Noisy Boy runs the final corner to win the Austrian Grand Prix. And with Ben McEwen second over the line, it's Noisy Boy who takes the victory with the time penalties added. So he wins the Austrian Grand Prix. Ben McEwen finishes in second place. Radicom finishes in third. Stoke Bloke. Or is it Monkey Mafia who takes fourth place in the Alfa Romeo? Then it's Stoke Bloke in fifth. Acid Masters in sixth place. Then it's Marcus 22, seventh. Gamer James 06 in eighth place. Then it's Denmark 166. He's going to have a very, he's going to be very disappointed at the end of this one. In ninth place, then it's Bishop's Finger. Or actually, Bishop's Finger will finish ahead of um, of Denmark because of Denmark's time penalty. So Denmark drops to tenth place. There's Karim 2L07 crossing the line. I don't think he's going to keep eleventh place. I think that's White Stripes' twelfth uh, place there. But what a victory for Noisy Boy! What a manic end to the race. The last third of the event, it looks like it was going to be Ben McEwen's domination. But it was Noisy Boy who took advantage of the safety car to come into the pit lane, put on the fresh set of rubber, completely undercut under the safety car to get in front of Ben McEwen and the others, and he managed to get his nose in front in the end to keep hold of the lead and maintain the gap he needed over Ben McEwen to take the race victory. What a splendid performance from Ben McEwen, who had the race victory in his pocket but had to settle for second. But a great result for Noisy Boy. Fantastic result. So Noisy Boy wins with the time penalties added. Ben McEwen in second place. It's Radicon in third. It's Monkey Mafia, Stoke Blake, Acid Masters, Malchus 22, Gamer Jane 06, Vicious Finger and Demop 166 running out the top 10. The fastest lap point goes to Noisy Boy 37. Cream ZL 07 was 11, followed by White Stripes, Zimpi, Shifty 15, then Tilwick 14, B Nasty Nata, and then Gummus Indu and Radio 46 with the non-finishers. So as it stands in the championship now with the time penalties, or with the race result from Austria I should say, 
Um, Noisy Boy would move up into third place in the standings. And with Radicon third and Game James 06 in eighth, that's an 11 point difference between the two uh, race results there. So that's the gap narrowed down to just three points between uh, Game and James 06, who maintains the lead in the championship, and Radicon in second place. And Noisy Boy, who moves up to third in the standings now, he's on 53 points to his name there. So he's very much in the fight for the championship, as is Ben McEwen. Wow, what a race that was! And I'm glad, I hope you enjoyed it. I most certainly had done. The next time these drivers will go racing will be next weekend for the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. I'm Tom Cairns, and I'll speak to you soon when the American F1 Racing Series returns.